Welcome to Bulga Socks TV. We've got lots of classic and original TV shows. Subscribe now and enjoy the video. Not the shrinking cat, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! excitement because Mr. Mentor had invented a new game called Binky Bonky Boo. Binky Bonky Boo, what do I have to do? Three. One, two, three. We all wanted to know what Josh had to do and Binky Bonky Boo told me I had to oh, dance. He has to dance. <laughs> Show some cool moves Josh. Come on, up you get. Just then Aunt Jules came downstairs. I don't think I've ever had to change a bed so quickly. Are we expecting a new guest then? Yes, last minute booking. Just one single lady, shouldn't be too much bother. I'm sure we'll barely know she's here. Sounds like her now. Uncle CJ opened the front door and in came... Miss Pansy Petunia, lovely to meet you. I'm Jules. Oh, I, I don't shake hands. You might have germs. Oh. Did you have a good journey? No. The flight was a disaster. I'm sure I sat next to a man with germs. Oh dear, sorry to hear that. Let me take your case to your room. Oh, come and meet the rest of the family. There's Grandpa, my niece and nephew, Wolfie the dog. Oh, you have old people, children and animals here? I didn't realise that. Oh, I couldn't possibly meet them. They might have germs. So, Auntie Jules took Miss Pansy Petunia into the kitchen instead and gave her tea and cake. There, that should make you feel better. Oh, not a bit of it. I'm feeling very poorly. My head is thumping, my tummy is gurgling, and my water bottle has gone cold. Yes, this was what it was like looking after poorly Pansy Petunia. Auntie Jules had an idea. If you're that poorly, perhaps you should see a doctor. Doctors? Oh, I've seen hundreds of doctors. They all say there is nothing the matter with me. Doctors are usually right. Oh, not in my case. They are all fools. Look at me. You can see how I am very, very, very poorly. <coughs> Just then, Mr Mentor came to say goodbye. I've come to say goodbye. When she saw him, Miss Pansy Petunia forgot all about feeling poorly. Is it? It can't be, surely. It is! It is Mr Mentor, the inventor. The most remarkable bubble inventor in the universe. Oh, so they say. And you are, dear lady? Miss Pansy Petunia, one of your biggest fans. Oh, don't touch me. You might give me germs. Oh, well. I must be off. Cheerio, so. <laughs> oh, after all the excitement of meeting Mr. Mentor, I'm feeling very poorly. I need to lie down now. I'll show you to your room. Oh, it must have a big window and a balcony so the germs can escape. Do you have a room like that? Only the sitting room. So soon, the sitting room looked like this. Anything else you need? Yes, I want you to disinfect everywhere in case there are any germs. I'll get my rubber gloves. This has gone cold. Leave it with me. 
We've been sent down to the kitchen with our Binky Bonky Boo game. I don't understand it. The mill on the marsh is perfectly clean. We don't have any germs, do we, Wolfie? Do you think that Miss Pansy Petunia is really poorly, or is she just a terrible worrier? I think she's a terrible worrier. She seems perfectly fine to me. She's seen hundreds of doctors, and they all say there's nothing the matter with her. Doctors are usually right. The only person she seems to like is Mr. Mentor, the inventor. Well, if he can invent a machine that told her there's nothing the matter with her, it might put her mind at rest. CJ, that's a brilliant idea. I'll phone Mr. Mentor now and ask him if he can invent one for us. Tell him I'll help him too. I'll go on my bike. See? I'm not just a pretty face. I think I'll come with you, Jason. This is a tricky job. And the more help Mr. Mentor gets, the better. But, Grandpa, you'll never make it up all the lighthouse stairs. I will if I'm in Jason's pocket. <gasps> not the shrinking cap, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! Do you know what happens when Grandpa shrinks? He runs and jumps about everywhere and hides in funny places. He uses his magic to make our toys go. Up the car! And the plane! And the Sunny Sands train! Grandpa! He can even make Mrs Ostrich fly. But today, he was going in Jason's pocket. In you go, Grandpa. Good luck! Mr. Mentor's starting work straight away. Oh, I see Grandpa's gone for a little lie down. I don't blame him. And soon, Jason and Grandpa were at Mr. Mentor's lighthouse. Oh, this is such fun. I've never invented something that can tell you what the matter is. I really hope it works. If Miss Pansy Petunia can stop thinking she's poorly, she can get out and have a nice holiday. It'll work all right, and it will be fabulous. <laughs> Mr. Mentor doesn't just invent things, he invents words too. Grandpa had jumped out of Jason's pocket and was watching. Back at the mill on the marsh. Feeling any better? No, it's just that there are germs everywhere. It's making me feel very poorly indeed. How long are you planning to stay? Until I feel better. And that could take a very long time. Back at the lighthouse, the invention was soon finished. Ta-da! I'm going to call it my Wizzy Woodlesome What's the Matter Chatterer. But will it work? It was time to find out. Oh, now we must test it, Jason. Now you stand in front of it, like so. So Jason stood ready, and Mr Mentor pressed the button. Grandpa was crossing fingers. Time we had a natter. Time we did some chatter. Time for you to tell us if something is the matter. Here's my bit of chatter. There's a lot the matter. You have blocked up nosy rosy tosy -itis. Blocked up nosy rosy tosy -itis? That sounds very serious. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, no, no, there's nothing the matter with me. That means the adventure's not working properly. Oh, I see. Oh, well, that's a relief. <laughs> um, maybe you need some time to think about it. Why don't we, um, look out the window while we're waiting? Brilliant idea. My inventions often start working when I'm looking out of the window. This was Grandpa's chance to help. He ran across the floor, jumped onto the table, and climbed into the invention. After a few moments, Jason turned round to see if Grandpa was ready. And he was. I think we've waited long enough. Are you ready to try again? Absolutely. Grandpa got right inside so he couldn't be seen. <clears throat> and Mr Mentor pressed the button. Time we had a natter. Time we did some chatter. Time for you to tell us if something is the matter. Here's my bit of chatter. Nothing is the matter. Which is true. Oh, fabridiculous. It works. You were right. It just needed a bit of time to think about it. Thanks, Mr Mentor, but I'd better be getting back to Miss Pansy Petunia. Oh, yes, you must. Oh, best of luck, and do give her my love. So, Jason gave Miss Pansy Petunia the What's the Matter Chatterer. Mr Mentor invented this specially for me? Actually, it was my idea. 
You chat to it and it tells you what the matter is. Oh, if Mr. Mentor invented it, it's bound to be correct. He is the most remarkable bubble inventor in the universe. Yes, we know. Jason pressed the button. Time we had an atter. Time we did some chatter. Time for you to tell us if something is the matter. Here's my bit of chatter. Nothing is the matter. Nothing? Are you sure? Absolutely nothing is the matter with Miss Pansy Petunia. And there are no germs at the mill on the marsh. No germs? Well, I never. Isn't that fantastic news? Oh, do you know what? Now that I know there's nothing the matter with me, I'm not feeling poorly anymore. Yay! In fact, I've never felt better in my life. I'm going to go to the lighthouse and thank Mr. Mentor, and then I'm going to have the most wonderful holiday! I'll give you a lift in Campo. Oh, dear. She's still wearing her nightie. i better tell her. So off rushed Auntie Jules. As soon as it was safe, Grandpa jumped out of the Wizzy Rudis and What's the Matter Chatterer. Cup off. Quick, Grandpa. Oh. <laughs> we did it. We did. Just like old times, eh? Teamwork. Teamwork. <laughs> Rosie and Fizz, Rosie and Fizz, playing together, whatever the weather, two best friends and the fun never ends. So come on in and play with Rosie and Fizz. Hello, my name is Lucy and this is Rosie. Hello Rosie, let's put Rosie here and it, this is Fizz. Hello Fizz and Rosie and Fizz have been very busy today playing with their toys and inside their toy box are lots of clues for today's story. Shall we have a look? There's a yellow door with a pink flower. Let's put that here. There's a cake. A cake with sprinkles on the top. And there's a plaster. Rosie and Fizz are meeting a new friend and we're going to join them. So are you ready? Let's switch to story time. And we switch to story time by making a big story clock. Can you make a big story clock with me? After three, one, two, three, a big story clock with seconds, minutes, and hours. And pretend your body is the big hand and put your little hand like this and join in with me. Tick tock, it's the story clock. It must be time for a story. Tick tock, it's the story clock. Are you ready for a story? Stretch up high, stretch down low Wriggle your fingers, wiggle your toes Tick tock, it's the story clock Hands up, who's ready for a story? Everyone was excited 
a path led to a house with washing on the washing line and a yellow door with a pink flower. Mouse spotted it first and Mouse told Hedgehog, Hedgehog told Butterfly, Butterfly told Bee and Bee told Fizz and Fizz said we must say hello. That's a good idea said Rosie. I'll make a hello card and put all of our names in it. Mouse said, I'll pick some flowers. Me too, said Hedgehog. Can we help? asked Butterfly and Bee. Butterfly and Bee were very good at finding the prettiest flowers. I know what I can do, said Fizz. I can make some cakes. That's a good idea, said Rosie and Rosie helped fetch the eggs and flour and butter and sugar. Everyone was busy. Rosie was busy colouring and sticking. She'd made a card with her sun. A bright yellow sun, said Rosie. And Fizz, well Fizz was busy sprinkling sprinkles all over his cakes. Gosh, said Rosie, that's a lot of cakes. How many do you have, Fizz? Fizz counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cakes. That's one for Hedgehog, one for Mouse, one for Butterfly, one for Bee, one for you, Rosie, one for the new person who lives in the house, and one for me. Would you like some help carrying the cakes? asked Rosie. Oh, no, thank you, said Fizz. I'll be fine. But when Fizz picked up the cakes, ooh, he wibbled and wobbled. Be careful, Fizz. Soon it was time to set off, and everyone wondered lives in the house with the yellow door. It can't be Frog, said Fizz, because Frog lives on the lily pad. And it can't be Badger, said Rosie, because Badger lives in the set. And it can't be Rabbit, said Hedgehog, because Rabbit lives in the burrow. Like this one, said Fizz. Fizz was running so fast along the path he didn't see the big stone. Watch out, Fizz! Bump! Whoops! Squish! Ouch! My knee! said Fizz. And look, the cakes have been squished. This one's fine, said Rosie. And when we get to the house, we can wash the mud off your knee. With that, they turned the corner and saw the path lead into the house with washing on the washing line and a yellow door with a pink flower. Fizz forgot about his sore knee. Rat-a-tat-tat! Fizz knocked the door. Everyone was excited. Who was inside? One, two, three. Let's open the door. It was Dr Dolly. Hello, said Fizz. My name is Fizz and I'm Rosie and I'm Hedgehog and I'm Butterfly bzz, 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 and I'm Bee and I'm Mouse said Mouse scurrying along. Hello said Dr Dolly. My name is Dr Dolly. What a surprise. Oh Fizz said Dr Dolly. Look at your knee. You best come inside. Dr Dolly fetched her doctor's bag. Inside was a jar of pink ointment, a thermometer, bandages and some plasters. We'll have you as good as new in no time, said Dr Dolly. Show me your knee, yes I see, washed with soap as clean as can be. Let's pat it dry, soft and slow. Plaster on, you're ready to go. Thank you, said Rosie and Fizz. Rosie gave Dr Dolly the hello card. Mouse and Hedgehog gave the picked flowers 
and Fizz gave Dr Dolly the cake. The trouble is, said Fizz, there were lots of other cakes but they got a bit squished. But this one is fine. Thank you, said Dr Dolly. One cake is just enough and she cut the cake for everyone to share. It was a lovely day meeting new friends. Dr Dolly was very happy to be living in the woodland and just as Rosie and Fizz were about to go home, Dr Dolly gave Fizz some more plasters just in case he fell over again. Thank you, said Rosie and Fizz. And that was the story of Rosie and Fizz and the plaster. It's nearly time for Rosie and Fizz to go, but just before we do, let's stick the thank you card, the plaster and the yellow door inside the Rosie and Fizz storybook so they'll always remember their story adventures. And why don't you join us next time for another Rosie and Fizz story. I wonder what toys we'll find inside their toy box. We'll see you then. Bye! Bye!